Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Last week, the Nigerian Communications Minister Isa Pantami revealed that some security agencies had gotten approval from the President, Muhammad Buhari, to assess or access the database of the National Identity Management Commission in the course of carrying out their duties. Well, uh, this week we're hearing that the president is being urged to rescind his decision. A civil society organization, Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, is urging President Buhari to use, quote, his good offices and leadership position to urgently review and rescind the reported approval of four security agencies to access um, people's personal details via the NIN SIM linkage without due process of the law. In a letter dated February 5, 2022 and signed by its Deputy Director uh, Kolawole Olua Dari, uh, the organization is also urging the President to quote, send executive bills to the National Assembly to repeal and reform all laws which are inconsistent and incompatible with Nigerians' right to privacy, dignity, and liberty. I'm glad to say Kolawole Oluwadari joins us this morning to throw more light on this right here on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, Ms. Oluwadari, good morning to you. Okay. Nice to be here. Nice to have you. Um, has, has the president, has the president um, replied to your letter? Not yet. Uh, so I won't be able to confirm whether he has gotten it or whether he has a risk. Okay. You, you're saying that you're not sure, you're not aware if the president has received the letter? Uh, no, I said... Uh, when I may receive, I may not, but as to whether he has received it in person, I, I will not be able to subscribe. But traditionally, letters go to correspondence or not go to direct. I'm sure there are people that receive it on the stairs before it gets to his table. So I, I think we have a whole week to wait and listen and watch, <laughs> depending on who. Okay, um, um, I'm sure the president, if he, um, you know, gets his morning papers, would see your letter, uh, report to your letter, <laughs> um, and of course he might begin to ask for it if he hasn't yet gotten it. But um, um, have, have you had any response from the president in the past? Is this uh, um, a, a tactic that has worked when you write to him, you know, on policy issues? Does he respond to you? Thank you, uh, it's, it's not a tactic. It's what every Nigerian should do, and it's what I would encourage every Nigerian to do. Uh, is, uh, it, it, it is, we are in a democracy. So how is the president supposed to get feedback from the people if uh, citizens don't um, communicate with them? And that is what we, we, we have been doing over the years. That is what we did. And so, but in the past, sometimes we get responses by way of correspondence from ministries who are copied in the letter. Sometimes we read about the responses on the pages of newspapers, just, just like you. But what is important is that we get action, not necessarily correspondence and response to our advocacy. But as long as we get actions that are beneficial to Nigerians, I think that that will suffice, and that is what is most important. Anyway. Let, let, let's look at the, 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 the issues uh, on the table. Um, you have an issue, or uh, sir, once the president received his decision, like we just said, why? Uh, because uh, that decision in itself, even though we are yet to hear from the president directly, is not legal in, in, in this instance. And, and the context is very simple to understand. The right to privacy is constitutionally guaranteed in Chapter 4 of the Nigerian Constitution. And what the law, the Section 45 of the Constitution says is that all those rights that are granted in Chapter 4 of the Constitution, of course, they are not, uh, they are not absolute. Any kind of action or anything that would derogate from those rights must pass through some fundamental principle. And they are called, it's called a three-part test, legality, proportionality, and necessity. And that means that as provided in the Constitution, there must be a law that would derogate from those rights. It must be a written law. And what that means is that that law itself must stipulate rights, duties, and obligations, both 
on the part of duty bearers, that is governments and agencies, and on the right on the part of right holders, which are the citizens. Presently, we have no such uh, comprehensive framework. What we have in the Constitution in Chapter 37 is a right to privacy, along with the right to freedom of expression in Section 39 and all other laws that interlink. We are yet to have the law that will concretely stipulate what are the rights and obligations. And we can ask this very simple question. This data that is being shared with security agencies, who, which security agencies are we talking about? Is it the police? Is it the EFCC? Is it the immigration services? The law needs to set up clearly who are those agencies. Secondly, what are the limits that they have to the use of this data? Don't forget, these are things that pertain to you and me, including who you spoke to, possibly last night, and how much you sent to a friend over the weekend, as little as that. So we are yet to have such laws in place. And then the president's question to ask is that if there is a breach of data, between uh, from when our data that is warehoused with the NIFC, any of the security agencies, if there is a breach of data, who are we going to hold responsible? Those are some of the provisions that must be in this framework that would clearly generate both rights, limits, and obligations. A right and a power cannot be at large. And I need to mention this that national security, which is what we've seen over time being used by government and government agencies, to curtail the freedom of expression of Nigerians is not enough. National security is too big a word to be thrown around. And you may not understand the essence of this right until as individuals, these rights are breached and are abused by these security agencies, particularly within the context of what we've seen, the historical antecedents of security agencies in Nigeria. How can we be sure that these rights will not be abused? But that is beside the fact that there is no law presently that creates even obligations on the part of how they use this data the excess, the limits, and even uh, if there is an abuse, who will be, who will be covered? And that is why it is uh, putting the cart before the horse in this instance, which is why we've told, we've um, asked the president to ensure that there are bills put before the National Assembly that will create these laws. The, the National Data Protection Regulation is, is a subsidiary legislation at best. It's not a law, at, at, much less a power with constitutional provisions of freedom of privacy. Of uh, privacy, to, to write the privacy uh, thank you, pardon. And so that is what needs to be done first before this kind of directive from the press. From the press. Hmm. Okay, I interesting, uh, uh, Kola Ole. Uh, we, we don't know yet what the agencies, like you said, involved are. Uh, we do not know the extent to which they might go. But you, you're talking about um, uh, uh, monitoring of phone calls and all that. Uh, are we really sure, and can we afford to speculate at this time? Um, if you're not totally sure, or if you don't have that information, as to what the extent of the past uh, the president has approved uh, are uh, or is, you know, because we hear, you know, you, you talk about Montreal phone calls. Wouldn't that be breeding some panic, especially bearing in mind the fact that the Nigerian Identity Management Commission doesn't deal with, with the phone calls and the network connection. They just have data, you know, you know, data, biodata and all that of the people who own these phone lines. Um, what do you say to that? Uh, no. And that exactly is part of the challenges that this, this kind of directive is going to bring. We do not know the extent. And when I talk about the extent of those powers, it is not just for the president to tell us. There must be laws. It must be a law that would regulate and create obligations that this is what you can do with this data. This is who you can share this data with. And these are the rights and obligations that follow the trail of data as it goes from agency to agency. We do not have that. And don't forget, your NIA is linked to your phone. So even if it's not captured, we don't know whether it's captured within the director of president. Even if it is not, how are we sure that eventually, given the chain of custody of this data, it will not eventually get to that. And don't forget, this administration has restated its commitment time and time and again, and we're caught on this as well, to monitor the WhatsApp conversations of Nigerians. It was in the news uh, when the 2022 appropriation bill was being considered. How the one tonight million was being uh, stated as appropriation for a particular agency of government to monitor the WhatsApp conversation of Nigeria. So again, that speaks exactly to the issue we're talking about. We do not know the extent of the use of this data. So if your NIN data is linked to your bank details, is linked to your phone, 
and it's linked to whatever. They, how are you sure that what is being accessed or released only pertains to your account and does not pertain to your phone call? Which is why you must have these clear directives in custody of the data, the rights and obligations of those public institutions involved, including liability for any kind of a breach of privacy. And this again will protect, constitution, um, particularly protect individuals from abuse, either by public institutions or, or officers of those public institutions, or even third party that might uh, inadvertently come across uh, such data. Okay, so thank you very much, Kola Wale. Um, um... We, we're aware of the, the, the reason given by the federal government for this NIN SIM linkage policy, which despite um, uh, the, the prevalence of, of COVID-19 and several government uh, uh, directives and even actions um, curtailing the freedoms of Nigerians in, in the name of lockdown, um, restriction of movement, you know, um, restriction on, on, on restrictions placed or limits placed on how many people can gather at uh, a time. Even with all this, they, they, they made Nigerians gather in numbers, exposing themselves to uh, COVID-19 just to register and to link their SIM cards um, with the NIMC database. So one of the reasons given uh, for that exercise was that um, it needed to be done for the sake of national security. Um, so so uh, why, why the reaction from Serap if they had already said they needed to protect Nigerians and they had already given a reason as far back as uh, last year why this was being done as being that of national security amongst others? Um, thank you. I think, Kofi, the point is that the NIMC is sufficiently empowered to obtain data from Nigerians and to be the warehouse of such data. That is not in doubt. But even that power to obtain data and to keep it must be within the framework of laws. Don't forget that there are constitutionally guaranteed rights to freedom, to the right to privacy. So even in keeping that data, it's my right to privacy. Now, we are going to another level now. Sharing of that sort of data. What, what limits the kind of data that can be shared by NIMC, particularly when there is a more and more uh, connections between your NIM? First, it was phone, now bank accounts. And then you can just um, understand how it's going to go on and on. You will link to your passport, your driver's license, possibly. And so, in the absence, so it is not enough to say national security. The NIMC has the right to collect some data. They don't need to give us a reason, as it were, to collect the data. But it is the use of such data that is very important. And I think we do not have enough laws that protect that presently. And I've mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, national security as, as a phrase, we cannot afford to abuse this catch-all phrase that we bring on the right of the Noting particularly that those who may have the power to do so today will ultimately be on the other side tomorrow. And that is why laws give rights and also curtail those rights. So you cannot curtail the rights of Nigerians to privacy on the altar of national security without also explaining and defining the limits of such use uh, mm. to prevent uh, abuse. Good. And that is why we need such framework. So it is not that national security is not important. It is that it is a catch-all phrase that, without limits, it is, of course, subject to abuse. Mm. I, I'd like to go back to what Mr. President said in May 2021, and uh, I'll re use his words. Um, you know, he said the NIN will help us fight, um, uh, help us fight insecurity, uh, identity, identify crooks, is what he said when he launched the national policy for the promotion of indigenous content in the Nigerian telecom sector. Um, so he, he, he said that um, the national identity number and linking it to mobile numbers, that linkage, will help fight insecurity in the country. Um, he said proper identification of all Nigerians and legal residents and ability to con conveniently assess, access rather, a, a database. Please listen to this. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, he said proper identification of all Nigerians. That's number one. And the number two, um, uh, ability to conveniently access a database will enhance effective planning and security 
uh, oversight. The statement said, and I quote, the NIN will cover one of the weaknesses in our security structure. We will be able to easily identify and know the personality of Nigerians. Uh, we'll also identify people easily, including crooks, he said. Now, um, if you go back to that, if you move back or forward rather from that, there were reports, you know, on, on the news. Um, for instance, The Guardian had one, um, one story three days ago, one year after NIM, NIN SIM policy, insecurity scams fester. This probably was because they had not started using uh, uh, or had not authorized the security agencies to access the database. Um, so I'll go back to the question. This had been said by the president long before now that the security agencies were going to access this database. And of course, the media and civil society in the, country, the general country were complaining about insecurity. And we had said, oh, okay, this thing has been done. We went through a lot to get this done. Why are we still having insecurity fester? And now the government is saying, okay, well, we have now finally approved that the, the security agencies can access uh, or can access, rather, uh, this database. So shouldn't we be moving forward on this, especially as in regards to the fact that national security is of overriding importance to every single Nigerian? Um, I think we have moved forward. Uh, the government is the one that is yet to move forward. We all recognize the need for national security, and we are all uh, witnesses to the prevailing level of insecure tension. There must be laws before we cannot afford this knee jack reaction to every and in the long run. So, again, the issue is not about um, the power of the NIMC uh, to get data. It is the, there's no legal framework that prescribes the limit of which public institutions those data can be shared with. And then as it goes along the chain of cost study, the extent of such data being exposed, and most importantly, how that data can be used by even the top party agencies. And I call them top party of public because I am the first person. The NMC is the custodian of my data. And then the top parties are those who NIC is given access to those data. Are there rights that follow the data as it goes forward to those public institutions to protect me and to curtail the extent of what they can use that data for? So, for instance, and this is just hypothetical, if my NIN data is shared with the Central Motor Registry database with the Nigerian police, for instance, what are they, and what, how much data do they need about me to be able to effectively do their work? Do they need to have bank, my bank details? Do they need to have access to my financial uh, transactions? Or do they just need to have my address? Those things must be clearly uh, identified. If not, we may think that in the name of national security, these things do not matter. They do matter. Then most importantly, what, who will be liable eventually if in the chain of custody as data progresses from the NIMC to other public institutions, there is a data breach and my data falls into the wrong hands, who will be responsible? There must be laws that prescribe that. And the third reason, like I mentioned earlier, is that the constitution recognizes that right. And the same constitution provides that if any law for any instance, for any reason in Nigeria, conflicts with constitutional provisions, naturally the constitution will prevail. And if Section 37 grants me the right to privacy, and if that right is going to be taken away for any reason, it was not that law. And that law was clearly spelled out. My duty is the duties of the NIMC, the other news that they took. The contention is not the use of data to fight insecurity. The contention is the absence of a legal framework. So what we are doing is more of a knee-jack reaction, putting the cat before the horse. So we are not against um, uh, the use of this data uh, to, to curtail insecurity in Nigeria. But okay. we cannot that those data that you know the security agencies that these things have been shared with. And that's very dangerous. Okay. Uh, 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 Dari, let, let's look at, you've talked about legal framework, and it's very important um, to, to um, uh, what do you call it, to, to, to talk about this, because at the end of the day, of course, you've said this is, um, uh, it affects all Nigerians, and the privacy 
uh, of Nigerians is very important as far as this is concerned. It, you know, we, 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 must, we must ensure national security, but we must also ensure that it's done uh, within the ambit of the law. I agree with you. I understand all that. But um, if, 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 if we're to be fair with the government, there's something that has been up since 2017. And I'm just going to uh, just bring it up on our part here so I can read it for you. And um, this is the um, National Identity Management Commission Act 2017. Uh, or rather of 2007. But this is mandatory use of the National Identification Number Regulations 2017. Um, and it talks about in part one, uh, additional transactions requiring the use of National Identification Number. Uh, but part two is very important. Uh, the process and procedure for exercising monitoring and enforcement powers. I think this is what Serap may have missed. Um, the process and procedure for exercising, monitoring, and enforcement uh, powers. And it talks about, um, in, in, in Section 2 of the whole um, regulations, power of the Commission to enforce compliance. Section 3, principles for monitoring and enforcement powers. Um, and, and, and this may be uh, what Sarah wants to see. It's already existing. I, I would like to read that uh, uh, paragraph 2 or Section 2. Um, for you so that you can give me your thoughts on these, your lawyer. So you're best position to do that. And um, that section two, it talks about the power of the commission, um, the side note, power of the commission to enforce compliance, principles for monitoring and enforcement powers. Um, so it says, this is under, under part two, the process of pro or procedures for the exercise of the commission's monitoring and enforcement powers shall be in accordance with the provisions of the act the mandatories of the NI regulations 2015 and these regulations. Section 3, uh, subsection 1 says, the commission, this is the NIMC, shall, in exercising its monitoring and enforcement powers, be guided by the following principles and considerations. A, transparency and fairness, or transparency, fairness, and non-discrimination. Transparency, fairness, and non-discrimination. Uh, um, don't you think this this does this or does this um, um, uh, cover it as far as you're concerned? Does this cut it? Uh, thank you very much, Kofi. I didn't want to interrupt you to say that we are aware of this law and that we use it extensively. The regulations from the NIMC. And firstly, this is a regulation, and the regulation is lawfully made. But the constitution prescribes that for, for any act or law that would take away my rights granted by chapter four because it should be a law. At, at the least, it should be an act of the National Assembly, not the subsidiary legislation of another public institution, which of course is subject, uh, may, may be subject to, to, to abuse. That's a first thing. Now, secondly, what you read out now in the regulations, transparency and policy, it's vague. It does not even prescribe actions and steps. It does not say if NIMC is giving, these are the people that the NIMC can share data with per time. This is the extent of what can be shared. These are the steps you must take before you get level to access A of data, level two of access to data. No, it is a just broad policy statement. It does not prescribe steps. And that is why it falls short of the three part test. Is it legal? Is it necessary? And is it proportional in this instance? Uh, to fight the security. It, mm. it is not. Okay. What okay. we need to have, which yeah. is part of the advocacy of the president, is to have an act of the National Assembly that recognizes the rights granted under the Constitution and also prescribes a curtailment to those rights while prescribing specific duties to specific institutions of government. And Kofi, what you read now, uh, at best, are just mere policy statements without concrete steps. And so in what you read now, what does this say? about who my data can be shared with. What does this say about it? Because don't forget, Kofi, every agency of government is not entitled to every part of my data that this with NIMC. So it means it, it's called uh, a need to know basis. It means they must only get what they need per time. And so who, who, regulate, who, who regulates that? What are the specific provisions of that? And I mentioned something, Kofi, that uh, I think is very important. If my data falls in the wrong hands between the NIMC and public institutions, who is going to be responsible? Is there any legal framework? Um, creating that obligation, or I have to go to court 
and walk through the High Court of the Supreme Court, spend 12 years before the court can declare uh, any kind of uh, restitution. No, no it, it, it's not enough, unfortunately. Mm. What, 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 will, what, will Sarah, uh, what will Sarah's next line of action be if uh, the president doesn't reply or respond to your letter, or you don't see any moves from the federal government to uh, create a legal framework uh, for the operation of this, this new idea? Uh, this is the ultimate pessimistic, but we are very optimistic that this time we may not have to resort to litigation. Um, now you do know that Lara, Sarah, uh, we do um, legal advocacy so well. Not because we like the courtroom, much, much so like you love the newsroom. <laughs> it is because after our right, our, our advocacy, as it were, it fails, then we have recourse to the court. And we go to court because we are law abiding citizens. Because the same constitution in section six says that the judiciary will be the final arbiter between the rights, obligations, and duties between individuals, between public institutions, and between individuals and public institutions. So if this is not needed to us requested from the president, because it is a statutory duty on the part of the president, don't forget, we did not write it to the president because we, we felt he should do it. It is because as the president, he owes Nigerians a duty, particularly those 73 million Nigerians, to protect them and that in fighting the security does not expose them to further damage and even acts of security. So we will, of course, necessarily have to go to court in the public interest. And I need to underscore this, uh, Kofi. If we do end up in court, it is not in Seraph's interest. It is in the public interest of those 73 million Nigerians, including yours, Kofi. And I wouldn't want your data, for instance, to fall into the wrong hands. Interesting. Um, I, of course, I'm talking to a lawyer, so uh, it's understandable. <laughs> I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, Kola Oleoluwadare is the Deputy Director of uh, Sarah Pittsman, I guess, and we'll be monitoring to see if the President um, does make changes to the policy. Thank you very much, uh, Oluwadare, for your time. Up next, we have discussions. There's an interesting conversation around education and the use of the spelling bee format as a way of enhancing the intelligence of our children and students. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us.